What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about a question I got from a viewer during one of my live streams. And that question was simply, how do I buy a real arcade? And you think about it, it's not really a straightforward process. The Some of the appeal with Arcade 1UP and iArcade and some of these other companies is that, you know, you just go to a store or a website and you buy the thing. And it shows up and you take it out of the box and you put it together like Ikea furniture and away you go. And it's a nice low bar to clear to get into the home arcade uh, community. And it's you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I have several of these myself. But eventually, I think we realize that these companies aren't always going to make the game that we want, the game that we love. Maybe it's just a weird niche title that they don't think is worthy of, uh, you know, the arcade one-up treatment. Maybe the control scheme is just a little too funky, a little too weird. Uh, maybe it's, you know, it all comes down to licensing and they just can't make the game. So what do you do? Uh, do you just give up and you just, you know, resign yourself to just play the games that are going to be currently available? Or do you take that chance and go out and try to find that cabinet, that dream cabinet, whatever that cabinet may be. So if you're going to do that, well, there's, I think there's a process, there's a procedure, there's a way to go about it. And there are just a ton of questions. And to be fair, I didn't really feel qualified to be able to answer them or really even address the topic altogether. I've only gotten recently gotten back into buying uh, real arcade machines. The first one I ever purchased was in uh, 2009. I got up to my, my collection, <laughs> got up to two full-size arcades. Eventually, you know, Life kind of gets in the way, and uh, and other things take priority, so I had to sell those. And I just sort of had a multi for a while. But like I said, within the last year, I just realized RK 1UP, these other companies are not going to make the cabinets, make the games that I want. And yes, there's just no replacement for the real thing. So I thought I'd go ahead and address it anyway. Listen, this is just going to be my opinion. There are other people in this space, other people out there, other websites are going to be much more knowledgeable and have more experience than I do. So this is going to be my two cents. You can take that and, you know, maybe, you know, five bucks and go buy a Starbucks coffee. But here we go. So we're going to go down the list. I have a list of things that you need to do. These are going to be the steps that you need to take before you even think about buying one. And then once you get to the point where you think you're going to go ahead and buy one, well, there's some more steps to take also. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start with the first and arguably the most important step, which is um, check with your spouse, check with your roommate, check with your mom if you still live at home. Listen, I'm not going to shame anybody. It is what it is, right? If you're living in grandma's basement, check with grandma and do it for real. <sighs> Listen, if you're married, uh, we tend to kind of do these things where we say, hey, honey, hey, significant other. What did you? What if you think uh, maybe I someday bought an arcade, and then they sort of half-heartedly say, "Well, I think I'd be okay with that theoretically," and then you, and then you know, the next week you go buy one. Now I, I don't mean that because that, listen, at the end of the day, th these things take up a lot of space, so you need to make sure everybody is on board with you bringing home whatever it is you're going to bring home. So number one is really, honestly, for real. Sit down with the person and say, listen, I really want to do this. I want to buy it. Here's how much it costs. Here's the space it's going to take up. Here's where I think I want to put it. And make sure everybody signs off on this. Trust me, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of heartache and a lot of arguments if you go ahead and do that now. And I know sometimes it is better to ask for you know forgiveness and permission. But when you're starting off with your first real arcade, let's not do that now. Let's maybe save that you know philosophy for the second cabinet. Okay, so once you have permission, now let's go on to the number two thing I really think you need to focus on, and that is, you know, the cabinet itself, the arcade machine itself. Uh, you know, one of the things that, I know this may seem simple, but you've got to check, is it even going to fit in the space you want to put it in? Now, if you're going to just back this thing up to your garage, open up the door and put it in the garage, and that's where it's going to live its life and stay, you're probably okay. Really just check the height of your garage door when it's open. And that's really all you have to worry about. So if you want to get some massive giant arcade and, you know, you're you're going to just leave the car outside, you're fine. But if you're going to try to put this in a basement or in a room or whatever, check every door, you know, that you're going to have to go through to get to the space that you want to house this thing in. I know it sounds silly, but really, before you get all excited and get your heart set on some arcade and you start talking to somebody and making commitments... Make sure that you know the size of the arcade. Usually it's the width you got to worry about. The height you can lean back because you're going to use a dolly to, to kind of transport this thing. But it's the width you really want to pay attention to. Make sure that's going to fit through every door in your house. Now once you get all this figured out, you've got the permission. You've got the spot picked out. Uh, you know you know that it's going to fit in your space. you got to be honest with yourself about the condition of the cabinet you're buying. Now listen, if you're not tech savvy, if you're not handy... 
if you really don't want to have to do anything to it, you're going to have to be honest with yourself and tell yourself that and then look for the cabinets that are going to be complete. Maybe they're restored from somebody who knew a lot about them. Maybe they just happen to be something in really good condition. Get a ton of pictures inside and out. Ask a ton of questions. You know, If you're going to have to have something that's 100% mint, then be honest with yourself and be honest with the buyer and be prepared to pay a little bit of money. But if you are not afraid of making some changes, making some modifications, doing a little bit of work yourself, well, then there you go. So figure out the condition, figure out the, it's got to fit, the cabinet has to do a couple things, right? It has to fit in your house and it has to fit you. It has to fit your skill set and what you're willing to take on. And also remember this, go back to the first question. Uh, well, the, the, the first question was asked the spouse if it's going to be okay. The second question, one, is it going to fit? Once it fits inside, remember, if it's a complete cabinet, that's all you have to worry about. The footprint of that cabinet is not going to change. It's complete, right? So you wheel it in the corner and you're good. But if it's not complete and you have to work on this thing, you take the footprint of that cabinet and multiply it by about four because you're going to have to spread everything out to work on it. So bear that in mind also. This single cabinet could take, the, take up the space of about three or four different cabinets depending on the condition of your project. So just bear all that in mind when you're trying to pick out this cabinet. Will it fit and does it fit you? Okay, so there are several ways to buy a real arcade. There's a ton of different ways to go and get these things. But before we get into all the different ways, we have to understand the uh, the convenience to cost ratio. Uh, these things uh, are, are connected, they're in tandem, because as convenience goes up, so does the cost. You know, the value is gonna go uh, way, way down, okay? So if you're, you're gonna pay for that convenience. So we talked about the condition of the cabin. If you need something that is, that is in complete, perfect shape well there's one but then to actually acquire the cabinet if you also you know want that same level of convenience you're gonna have to pay for that also so you're gonna have the cost of a premium cabinet and you're gonna have the cost of all the convenience and I'm talking about the convenience of getting the cabinet to your house so remember there's a there's several different ways there's several different layers to this I think we're gonna go through about four main ways to actually you know acquire these cabinets the most convenient is also going to be the most expensive. So just bear that in mind. So let's start with what I'm going to call max convenience. <laughs> this is going to be the most convenient way to get a cab that you want, right? Any kind of uh, real cabinet, this is going to be the most convenient way. It's the most hands-off for you. It's the most hands-off you're probably going to ever, ever get, right? It doesn't get much easier than this. Remember, maximum convenience is also going to mean maximum cost. Maximum convenience is going to be auctions, it's going to be dealing with a an actual dealer of arcade cabinets. Usually those dealers will have everything lined up to where they can take care of everything for you, right? They're going to pallet this thing for you. They're going to wrap it up. They're going to handle all the transportation to get it to your home. Uh, they're going to handle everything, and you're going to pay, you know, one price, and that's it. There's a couple different ways this can go. Like I said, you can deal with a, an actual dealer. You can find a local amusement person that deals with these cabinets in your area, you know, and then, uh, or just go online, you can find them in different places, and then they'll take care of everything for you. It's one fee, you pay the, the big, it's going to be a big number, but you pay that big number and away you go. If you're going to go the auction route, you have to remember there are auction fees associated with that. So it's easy to get caught up in the auction and pay a price and think you got a really good deal, but that's not always the case. Before you get into any auction, Make sure you read in detail all the different rules, all the different uh, listing fees, all the final value fees, whether it's eBay, whether it's a live auction. Make sure you get all that figured out. And then also you need to kind of have an idea of what those, what the cost of the shipping you know, is going to be, and that's going to give you that real price. One of the good things about eBay, one of the good, there's a lot of bad things about eBay, but one of the good things about eBay is that usually... Uh, they'll have it all spelled out right there. So you'll see the actual price of the cabinet and you'll you'll see a big number on the bottom that will tell you the shipping. And that's usually, I mean, it's all over the place, but you know, like I said, you're gonna pay max cost or max price for that max convenience. So you're gonna have a big number for the uh, cabinet and then probably like sometimes 750 bucks just for shipping. And they throw those big numbers out there to cover everybody in the continental US, right? Uh, so that's gonna be your max way to go. Go to an auction. You have to sign up online before you bid on the auction. So something like King's Auction, uh, you're going to have to go ahead and sign up pre, uh, you know, before you make any bids. Get the, they're going to love to get that credit card information. Once again, read all the rules. But your maximum, the easiest way, the most convenient way, the max convenience way is going to be some kind of online source like that or an auction like that. Everything will be taken care of. But remember, maximum convenience, maximum cost. Okay, so now let's talk about 
three quarter convenience. This is the one that's uh, going to be a little less convenient, but could actually save you a couple hundred bucks depending on where the cabinet is and where you are. And this is basically an auction uh, or like an eBay or some kind of online listing, but you're going to have to cover the shipping cost. And believe it or not, that can actually save you, like I said, a couple hundred bucks. They still do everything, right? You still have the cost of the cabinet. You'll have some, uh, you'll have some, the cost of actually, uh, sometimes they'll charge you extra for crating it up. So you'll see a price, but then as you read the description, let's see, let's use eBay for an example. They're going to charge you a little bit extra for palletizing and wrapping up and all that. Now, the reason they break it out like that usually is because sometimes if you're in the area, you can just go drive over and pick the thing up. But in this scenario, Let's say you have to ship it, but you're going to go ahead and take care of the shipping. So make sure you get, once again, all the, all the final fees, the total price, and if there's any crating that they're going to have to do, make sure you go ahead and factor that in. Uh, usually I've had quotes for about 150 bucks to put this thing on a skid or a pallet, and they do a little bit of crating to stiffen it up, and they wrap this thing up with shrink wrap, and away you go. Also, when, when you're paying for that fee, find out exactly how many pallets this thing is going to be. Now, that may seem like a silly question, but... If you're talking about a racing cabinet, sometimes, depending on the size of the cabinet, it could be multiple pallets, multiple skids. You have to know this information before you can even think uh, or hope of getting a shipping quote. Um, also get the weight, the approximate weight, and then the approximate height of this, uh, this skid, this, this cabinet that's going to be ready to go. How, how are they going to ship it? Is it going to be laying down or standing up? Usually these things are standing up. They're wrapped up pretty good. So you're going to talk about a fairly small footprint but a pretty tall cabinet. So once you get all that information, you can, you can use a bunch of different methods. If you work in shipping and receiving, you probably have some contacts that you can reach out to to get some kind of shipping quote. But if you don't, and you're just a average person needing to get some kind of a shipping quote or a freight quote, you can actually go to freightquote.com and input all the information. Some of the information they're gonna ask is obviously, where is the item located? Where are you shipping it to? There's also more things to consider uh, than just locations, right? They're going to want to know all the information that I just told you to get about the actual arcade itself. How is it created? What's the weight? And how many pallets? Also, you have to think about this too. And you're going to have to reach out to the seller. How are they going to be receiving it? Um, is there a dock? You know, is it just a, a matter of like a big 18 wheeler can just back up to a dock and then some guy on a forklift will just drive the uh, the arcade wrapped up onto the uh, trailer. Sometimes, you know, they don't have a dock. So you're going to have to you're going to have to figure this out because this is information like freight quote is going to need. You're going to have to specify, uh, do we need a lift gate? You know, when we pick up this item, are we going to need a lift gate? You know, figure out what they need to get the thing loaded up in the truck at the seller's location, and then you're gonna have to figure out what are you gonna to need to get the thing unloaded at your location. Usually, if it's a residential location, you're gonna to have to have a truck with a lift gate. These things all have to be spelled out when you're getting this quote, it all factors in. But once you get all this information and you put this all in freightquote.com with all the zip codes and everything, it'll give you some you know, options. And believe it or not, there's actually some big savings you can have. Now, we'll take for the example, the eBay listing where I said they wanted 750 for shipping. I got quotes that were $500, even about $340. So depending on who you go with, I mean, it is kind of a roll of the dice, but you can save hundreds of dollars over their generic shipping quote. So you can see that yeah, you can save some money and the convenience level is actually still pretty high. You're not physically having to go pick the thing up. But that is just a way uh, that you can maybe sacrifice a little convenience, just a little bit of convenience because there is more time you're going to have to spend on the phone and emails and messaging back and forth. But once you get all that figured out and the thing gets home, you'll be happy that you saved a couple hundred bucks. Okay, next up, let's talk about half convenience <laughs> we're going to lose a little more convenience here but still there's some substantial savings uh to be had if you do this method so take the shipping method that we just talked about um but we're going to add a little more complexity to it i purchased a cabinet from a an ebay seller and what they gave me was a shipping option of fastenal now what fastenal does is uh if the seller is close to a fastenal they can have fastenal pick uh pick the cabinet up and then fastenal will deliver to another fast and all location for just a couple hundred bucks. I actually saved $300 on shipping doing it this way. So this is something that, you know, the seller usually has to kind of uh, initiate with a, a local fast and all in their area, but you can save a lot of money. I mean, a ton of money, and especially if you live near a fast and all, this may be a really good option for you. But there's a, you know, there's kind of a catch. 
you're gonna have to pick this thing up from Fastenal. Now, usually uh, when I go to my Fastenal to pick up the cabinet, it's sitting on the ground, it's sitting on the floor, and they have a forklift there to help you load it up. But you're still gonna have to have some sort of means to get this thing into you know, to your house. So that could be a trailer, that could be a truck, but also be prepared to get this thing off of the trailer or truck whenever you get home. So I think with this method, you're gonna be able to save, you know, a ton of money on shipping, really. I mean, you're talking about a couple hundred bucks versus $500, $700, whatever. Um, is this going to be cheaper than you arranging shipping? Like the last thing we just talked about? Well, maybe. I don't know. But the problem with this method is you're going to have to have a way to get it from a Fastenal location to your house. Now, if you live next to a Fastenal, well, maybe this is not a problem. <laughs> maybe this is not an issue. Uh, but a little less convenient, obviously. Requires you to have some sort of method to get it to your house, usually a truck. I would, I would recommend a trailer, but the way I did it, I actually had a buddy that had a trailer and, uh, he was looking for a reason to get out of work early. So we left early in uh, in his truck and pulling his trailer and he helped me get it home and helped me unload it. Didn't cost me anything. So that's definitely a way you can save some money. Uh, but it also is a little less convenient. Okay. The final way to bring one of these home is going to be the least convenient, but in my opinion, can be the most adventurous. It actually could be the most fun, and it's a great way to meet other people that you know are enthusiastic about this hobby. And this is, you get in your truck, and you rent a trailer, and you go get this thing. Now you can rent a trailer, you can buy a trailer. If you already have a trailer, this is not an issue. And uh, you know, you really don't have to have a big truck either. I'm not talking about some big one-ton truck. The, the the trailer you're gonna have to you're gonna need and whether you own it or whether you rent it, I usually just rent trailers from U-Haul, um, it doesn't necessitate a big truck. It doesn't even really need to be a truck. It could be a small SUV or a medium-sized SUV. Uh, minivans, uh, probably not. And, uh, uh, you know, like, don't, don't be trying to pull a trailer with your, you know, Pontiac Fiero if they're still around. Kind of an odd thing to reference. Anyway, so I think that uh, the best way to go about this is to figure out, once again, the cabinet you're going to go get. If you're going to get a standard cabinet like you, what you see behind me, the diehards, uh, like, like a Dynamo HS5, something, some sort of singular cabinet about 30 inches wide, you know, a standard height cabinet, you can get away with a 4x8 trailer from U-Haul. And these things, I mean, you rent these things for 14 bucks a day, which... Is really nothing when you consider you can you can do a big two or three day round trip depending on where you're willing to travel, uh, you know, for less than fifty bucks. It's really not a bad deal, and that's the beauty of this method. While it is the least convenient, it removes all barriers. It removes all you know uh, uh, cost issues because you're only going to be down if you have a vehicle that can pull a trailer. You're only out the cost of the trailer itself, which is which is peanuts. It's really nothing. Now, I've pulled both the 4x8 trailer from U-Haul and also the 5x8 trailer from U-Haul. And I would recommend the 5x8 because it gives you, obviously it's a little bit wider. It's the same length, but it's a little bit taller inside also. So if you want to go inside and strap this thing down, it really helps to be able to have a little extra headroom to crawl inside and strap down your cabinet. The other benefit of the U-Haul trailer is that it's so low to the ground, which is going to make getting this thing in and out really, really easy. If you don't do a trailer, and if you've got some kind of long bed truck and you think you want to do it that way, well, that's fine. But one thing you got to consider is it's not going to be covered. That's the benefit of the U-Haul trailer is that it's a covered trailer, it's sealed. So if you've got a long distance to travel, I mean, if you're willing to go from coast to coast to pick up the game you want, you know, you can expect to have some inclement weather. That covered trailer is really going to be, uh, uh, you know, invaluable. It's going to be worth its weight in gold. But if you want to put this thing in your truck to save a little bit extra cash, well, that's fine. I get that. It's not going to be covered. Also, you've got to remember you're having to put this thing in a truck that's a couple feet off the ground, you know, versus a trailer, uh, a U-Haul trailer, which is just, you know, really just a few inches. I mean, you're talking about like 12 inches off the ground. It really makes it convenient for getting it in and out. Now, you do have to lower it pretty low, but the benefit of that is you can just really just lower that down, and you can even put this on a creeper, wheel it in place, get it inside the trailer, and uh, it really doesn't take that much effort. Once you have it laid down, you can push that inside. Getting it out of the trailer is easy because it's so, well, it's easier because it's so low to the ground. Getting it out of a truck, on the other hand, a little bit of a different story. And also you have to remember, if you're loading something into a pickup truck, these cabinets are heavy. Tailgates are not always the most rigid and, and, uh, and solid, uh, you know, thing on the truck. So it's possible, especially if that cabinet slips, you could damage your tailgate because they tend to be, you know, fairly hollow. Uh, you know, and then if you lean the thing on the tailgate, so let's say you lay this thing down, usually it's on the edge of a trailer, which is pretty rigid. If you lay this thing down, lean it down on your tailgate, 
pick it up and try to slide it in. When you pick it up, you could bend your tailgate. It's just something to consider, especially if you're talking about a smaller truck. So a lot of things to consider there, but I would definitely recommend, especially for the cost of 15 bucks, go get a U-Haul trailer. It's sealed up. There's, it's got a lot of points inside where you can strap this thing down. Get a bunch of moving blankets that are pretty cheap. If you have some outdoor furniture with those cushions, throw those in there also. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of padding around your arcade, especially if the arcade you're going to go pick up is sweet, if it's complete, if it's cherry, if it looks so good and you don't want to damage the artwork, you know, the more padding, the better. The more ratchet straps, the better. But, you know, if it's not super premium, it's not in the best shape in the world, well, maybe you can, you can afford to scratch it up a little bit here, a little bit there. And remember, a few things, you know, could be damaged from, uh, from the transit, doing it yourself, and you're going to cover the cost of that. There's nobody else to blame. There's no freight company to get mad at, you know, if it gets scratched or cracked or dented, you know, you're on the hook for that. One thing to consider with these cabinets, usually there's the thick piece of glass that covers the monitor. Take that out and put that in the truck or put that in the SUV and wrap it up in a towel. You don't want that bouncing around while you're driving. I mean, you know, it's just, you're going to be traveling, depending on the distance, you could go through some hills, some valleys, some bumps, some construction area, and you really don't want to damage that. You don't want that glass to break at all. You don't want that to, you know, you don't want to clean it up, and then you don't want to have to replace it either. So super fragile stuff like that, definitely want to take it out and set it aside. But that is going to be the least convenient it's going to be the cheapest for sure. There's no shipping cost whatsoever other than the cost of the trailer. And, uh, you know, you're on the hook to transport the whole thing. But it can also be a great way to spend some time on the road, seeing maybe a different part of the country you haven't seen before. And maybe if you've got a son or a daughter or a spouse or a good friend uh, that's willing to go with you, man, there's nothing better than a road trip with a buddy or a friend or a family member to make the time go by. And, you know, you're making memories. And uh, it's going to be something you can talk about years later when you're playing your arcade. Okay, so that's about the end of my advice for buying a real arcade cabinet. There's a lot to consider. This definitely shouldn't be an impulse buy unless you're experienced buying these cabinets. There's a lot of things to consider, a lot of fees that can kind of bite you in the butt if you're not prepared for it. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not the most experienced person when buying real arcades. That's what the comment section is for. Everybody jump in, give your advice, give your comments, uh, you know, and maybe add a little bit to the conversation. Everybody can benefit from it for sure. I know I've uh, benefited a ton from all of you out there commenting on the videos, good or bad. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the channel. Y'all have a blessed day and I will see you next time.